welcome to the Plagues Project. And Plagues, many angles. Now more than ever. Come learn with us. Rashi's introduction to the Song of Songs describes the relationship between God and Israel as a painful love story. The protagonist is a woman who has been married for a long time, but her husband has left her, leaving her, quote, as if in living widowhood. But he does not divorce her. Meanwhile, she continues to long for him and to wait for his return. Her husband is also suffering because he is, quote, connected to her with a powerful love, and he wants her to know that he is still her husband and will return to her. Notice how strong the language is here. Today, when a husband leaves his wife and doesn't divorce her, we would consider her an aguna and consider what he is doing to be a form of abuse. Israel's commitment to remaining in relationship with God despite this as a challenge. What does it mean to be in relationship with God when God sometimes feel absent? How can we feel God's loving presence even at these times? Rashi works out these questions by engaging with the text of the Song of Songs, which is a very complicated book. It seems on the face of it to be a collection of love songs with different protagonists and settings. The male protagonist is sometimes a shepherd and sometimes King Solomon. The female protagonist is sometimes a shepherdess, sometimes rich, and sometimes very young. Sometimes the characters are engaged, sometimes they're married, sometimes they're meeting in secret. Rashi reads these different songs as referring to different moments in God's complicated relationship with Israel, as described in the Torah. I'm going to look here at four of these moments with an eye to how each of them provides a different model for how to feel God's love in difficult times. First, in Song of Songs, chapter one, verse two to four, it's a song about someone longing for kisses from a lover. The lover is a king. The speaker asks to follow the king into the king's chambers. Rashi reads this as the voice of the estranged wife who is thinking about her estranged husband, missing him and wishing he would return. At the same time, it is also the voice of Israel, thinking about God while in exile. Writing in exile, Israel remembers when God saved them in Egypt. The memory of the past redemption holds the key to the future redemption. This is the first solution that Rashi gives for the problem of divine absence. Tell stories of when things were better. Second, Song of Songs chapter four, verses six to eight tells a very different story from the previous one. In it, the two protagonists can only be together for a short time until the sun is hottest and then they'll have to go. The man asks the woman to come with him to different places, Lebanon, the peak of Amana, lion's dens. In Rashi's story about God and Israel, this is God saying to Israel, eventually you'll be exiled from the temple. And when that happens, God says, I will go with you. God says to Israel, let's go together to all of these places. Rashi connects this story of God being with Israel in exile to Moses describing the borders of the land of Israel to the Israelites before they cross over the Jordan to go into the land of Israel without him. Moses will die in exile and will not himself go to the land that he is describing. But Moses died with God's kiss. Even though he never personally went into the land of Israel, God was still with him. So too, Rashi says, God is with all the generations of Israel, those that will return, and those that will only see the land from a distance. Rashi calls on all those who love God in a time of exile to find God where they are and to feel God's love where they are, even in troubling times, even in exile. Both God and Israel commit to a future in which they are together in all the places where they will go. God might feel absent, but in reality is always present. Three, chapter five, verses two to seven, of Song of Songs tells a very different kind of story of a woman whose lover comes to her at night. She hesitates to open the door for him, and when she does, he is gone. She goes out in search of him and instead finds guards who beat and abuse her. And yes, she should have opened the door, but on the other hand, the guards beat her and attack her unprovoked. Rashi here reads the woman as not wanting to open the door for her husband because she is engaged in adultery. 
Rashi here connects this passage to Jeremiah 44, which takes place after the destruction of Judea and Jerusalem. The few Judeans left in Judah had fled to Egypt, even though Jeremiah had prophesied that God wanted them to stay in Judea and had taken Jeremiah with them. In this passage, Jeremiah asks the Judeans living in Egypt to return to God and turn away from idolatry, explaining that everything bad that had happened to them had been because they turned away from God. They tell Jeremiah, no, we're going to continue doing the things we're doing. We're going to continue worshiping the Queen of Heaven. That was better. All right. So in this third approach to Rashi's of understanding exile, distance from God is a consequence of our own individual and collective rejection of God. But at the same time, there are other people who are causing harm to us unprovoked. This third approach asks us to love God by asking whether we are remaining faithful to God's love and by demanding of us to make changes if we're not. Four, Song of Songs ends in chapter eight with the song of a woman yearning and hoping for reunion with her beloved. She wishes her beloved were her brother so that she could kiss him in public and bring him home to her mother's house. Rashi compares this yearning to the story of Joseph comforting his brothers in Genesis 50. This is one of the most classic examples of something that looks like a tragedy turning out for the best. As Joseph explains to his brothers in Genesis 45, quote, do not be sad and do not be angry with yourselves because you sold me here, because God sent me to preserve life. In retrospect, Joseph was able to see everything that happened to him as an act of God in which God was constantly present and constantly involved and constantly making things happen for the best. The story of Joseph is one of the last stories that Rashi cites in his Song of Songs commentary, and the Exodus is one of the first. But because in the Torah itself, the story of Joseph leads into the story of Exodus, the story of the Song of Songs for Rashi is cyclical as well as linear. The Jewish people's history moves linear, linearly, from Avraham through Joseph, through Moses and the Exodus, to exile and the hope of a future return. But it also moves in cycles, from distance to God, to closeness with God, and back again. Deuteronomy 4 describes a cycle in which sin is followed by exile, which is in turn followed by repentance, which is in turn followed by return from exile. This cycle of sin and repentance, exile and return, will be repeated over and over through all the stories of Joshua, Samuel, and the two books of Kings. This fourth approach and the connection to the story of Joseph suggests that tragedy and distance for God are part of a cycle that can lead to things becoming better. Of course, that depends on our own choices as well, since ultimately what made Joseph and his brothers able to see the good in what happened was the brothers' choice to repent and to act differently from, they had, from what they had before. In Song of Songs, chapter eight, verse 14, at the very end of the book, a woman sitting in a garden calls on her lover while her friends listen and asks him to come to her, quote, like a young heart or a gazelle. For Rashi, this describes the present reality where Israel is in exile and scattered, but engaged in prayer and study. When she calls on God to come to her, in the words of Rashi, she is asking God to hasten the future redemption. This is when Rashi brings the Song of Songs into the present moment, the moment Rashi describes in his introduction. Israel is like a woman whose husband has abandoned but does not divorce her. After giving us options for how to understand this absence, Rashi ends with hope. In the end, loving God means continuing to have hope, remaining in the relationship, and insisting on its return.